Whoa. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I have been on social media and making videos for over like over 12 years. It might even be like 15. And I don't think that I've ever done something as scary as what I'm about to do. (laughs) I'm not even going to lie. I am sweating bullets, y'all. I'm sweating bullets. I got my crystals to keep me calm because (sighs) help me. Today, we are having a very real talk because I think that 2020 has let us know that she is not about the fakeness. She is not about um, not acknowledging the truth. And she has definitely whipped me into shape, into recognizing things that I was scared to admit to, scared to acknowledge, scared to realize. But it's important that I realize them because it's time for me to move on. And a big part of moving on from me is acknowledging what was in your life. In order for me to like move on to the next chapter, I need to acknowledge the previous chapters before that. I, for me, I need to take lessons from them. And a major part of taking lessons is sharing what I know with other people. Oh, God. (laughs) And uh, a way that I also find healing is by sharing what I learn with other people. So that's what we are doing today. I am ready to go on. And in order for me to do that, I first need to to, uh, close this chapter. And so we are starting today. Oh, my God. (laughs) As you can probably tell by the title. I have left uh, my network marketing company, Monate, and I have left the industry. I have closed down the doors of the business that I've been a part of for the last three years. And it was not an easy decision to make at all. Like really, really not easy at all. It took a very long time, not only to decide whether or not I was gonna close it, But it also took a long time to even get to this point, to put it on camera, to share my story, to talk about it. Um, Literally took four months, five months to make this video because this is a process because of the fact that it's been a part of my life for so many years. A major part, everything I did was with my business in mind. So it's really hard to just leave it when you've been doing something for three years. And it's even harder when part of what you did impacts so many people, customers, your team, and all of that. So it was a very, very hard decision and an emotional decision to make. But at the same time, um, you know, again, 2020 is all about the real. And there's a lot of things that I think that I was not telling myself. I wasn't being honest with myself because I was afraid of facing the truth and then realizing that I would have to take action as a result of knowing the truth. You know what I mean? I mean, denial ain't just a river in Egypt. So (laughs) So let's start with my story, who I am, and all of that, because some of you guys watching this may feel like you already know me, you already know my story. Um, Some of you may not know me at all, so we'll start there. And then because the meat of this video is gonna be a little bit lengthy, I'm not gonna dive into like all the details of my story and I'm gonna try really hard not to talk too much. Oh my word, because you guys know I talk a lot, but okay, I don't know why Staten Island just came out. I don't know why I said it like that, but it did, whatever, it'll, go, it'll come and go. <laughs> if you don't know, I'm originally from Staten Island, New York. Um, anyways, All right, so my story begins when I was but a wee little lad. No, I'm kidding. Uh, No, we're not going that far back, but I, uh, okay, I went to school. I decided to become a uh, social worker, a therapist. Um, My passion 
is family studies. That's what my major was in, my bachelor's degree. And I love everything that has to do with emotional wellness, family life. I love doing workshops. I love therapy. And so I got my bachelor's degree knowing that one day I was going to become a therapist. I wanted to be my own boss. I knew that I did not want to have to work for um, a boss, like have a boss, have a supervisor, anything. I knew that I was going to get this degree. Then I was going to find my way to becoming my own entrepreneur because I've just always, my first business I started, I think I was nine, nine or 10. And I had like a candy store. And every year I had some new business venture idea. I had a candy store. I had an ironing business. I had a babysitter's club because we all know that that was the rave in the nineties, you know, all these different ideas of what I was going to do to make money. So it only made sense that as an adult, I would try to find my way into becoming a successful entrepreneur. But um, when I graduated with my bachelor's, I moved on to getting my master's in therapy, in marriage and family therapy. I got a job working as a family specialist. And at the time I was making videos just kind of for fun. And so I would make these videos for fun. And um, I started to, to transition them into more educational videos talking about how to manage anxiety, how to um, deal with overwhelm and stress and things like that. And uh, I, I was doing that kind of on the side while working full time. But while I was working full time in therapy, I wanted the freedom. I really wanted to figure out a way to truly become a full time entrepreneur focusing on life coaching and not so much therapy. I really wanted to help people manage anxiety and uh, find their voice, manage their, their emotions. And so eventually through life, I found my way um, in starting my own life coaching business. And so I started working as a life coach, but I struggled to find financial success. I would, like many entrepreneurs, I would have some months where I felt like boom, I'm making it. I'm, you know, I'm making some money. I'm working with the types of clients that I want. And then other months where it was total famine and I couldn't find clients. I didn't quite understand marketing. And I also just didn't have confidence in myself. So I really had a hard time consistently making money in my business. And, uh, along the journey of that, I met a friend who had a network marketing business and she saw me trying my hardest to find success as a life coach and started to talk to me about the possibility of starting my own network marketing business and um, learning marketing strategies and making consistent income by using my coaching skills inside of a network marketing business. And, you know, my initial reaction was like, I'm not going to do that. I felt like, you know, um, why would I pay to start a business? Um, I remember my mom told me when I was a kid not to do something like if I have to start, if I have to pay to start it, then it's not a real job or something like that. And uh, so I kind of felt that way. And so I was like, no, but over time I started to see that she was having success, financial success. And I was curious because I was like, I want to have financial success too, girl. Okay. We trying to pay these student loans off. All right. And I wanted the freedom that I saw her have. And so um, I found myself just watching, paying attention to like, is she finding success with the business? And uh, eventually I found myself being like, you know what, girl, tell me how you doing this. Tell me how you doing this. And that led me to eventually starting my own network marketing business. And uh, I'm sorry if you're going to hear some things because I took some notes here so I can hopefully stay organized. Um, but that led me to starting my own business and partnering with this hair care company. And I was excited about it. I was really excited because one of the things as well is that personally, I struggle with seborrheic dermatitis, eczema, psoriasis, all the things because I'm just so lucky. And uh, um, I have not been able to find a shampoo that can help my scalp. Since I was 11 years old, I've had this diagnosis and nothing has worked. I have used so many expensive shampoos that would only work for a week or two and then it would stop working and things like that. So when she shared the products with me, 
they worked. I mean, they really did. And I was like, okay, girl, we about to do this. Okay. So between knowing that she was having success, knowing that these products were effective, I was set. I was ready to dive in. And so I started my business. Okay. And as I started my business, I did not have success right away. My first year, I did not have a lot of success right away. But over time, I started to feel like I was making some money. I started getting paychecks every week. And then you get a bonus on the 15th. And I was starting to see some dollars. So I felt like, okay, this is a legit business. And although I saw um, some people in my business doing things that I definitely was like, I'm never going to do that or I was encouraged by some people to do things that I felt were manipulative or wrong um, because I wasn't willing to do that and I wasn't doing it. I felt like it's possible to be a part of this industry and to have success in this industry, to make money in this industry without having to do skeezy things or you know things like that. Like I felt like I, you know, I'm, I'm different, you know? And so I felt good about the way that I did my business, the way that I um, did everything. I felt really proud of it. And I still feel proud of it. I still feel good about how I did business. Um, I don't ever felt, feel like I like sold out, you know, lost a little bit of my soul in the process towards reaching for success, which often can happen not only in this industry, but in careers, period. But that's a whole different thing. Um, however, 2020 ain't about the games. And all of the things that I was telling myself that I was different, that I wasn't willing to sell out, that, um, that this industry can work for you and all of that, 2020 has hit me over the head with the reality, the reality that, you know, you just, you can't play games um, anymore. Just because one, just because you're not doing something doesn't mean that being a part of it isn't does isn't harmful and two that the truth is is that as much as I felt like I was having success and I felt like I was different being a part of this I was not actually having the success that I really wanted the control that I really wanted and um, I wasn't benefiting not only personally but I wasn't benefiting others by being a part of it and so 2020 um, has just, I think everybody's in that space right now where we're all learning about the fact that we have to pivot. A lot of the things that the systems that we relied on, the lives that we were telling ourselves, like racism is dead, right? We're all realizing that, uh, no, boo, you need to acknowledge the truth. And I felt like that was happening for me when it came to my business. And so in March of 2020, when quarantine was first beginning, um, I was nervous. I was like, what the heck? I mean, I think everybody was nervous. We all started off thinking, okay, this is only going to be a two week thing. We just got to stay inside for a while and we'll be fine in two weeks. And then as time has gone on, we're now in July 1st, we're still in quarantine, you know, all the things, uh, we, I think it left us with nothing but reality. There was no distractions. There's nothing kind of stopping us from really acknowledging what's actually happening um, in our lives, whether it be on uh, you know, the relationships that we have, the career that we have, all of those sorts of things. And so I think we're all in this space where we realize like there's no, um, you got to acknowledge what's right in front of you because there's nothing distracting you from what's in front of you. And so in March of 2020, I found myself really disappointed in, in, in the company that I, that I was partnered with. Um, we, I was disappointed in how they handled the original news of, of, quarantine and this big C word and all of that. Um, but I was really, really disappointed once everything kind of switched, or not switched around, but once everything came to light in the, in the world of racial injustice and everything that's going on. <sighs> okay. Obviously as a black woman in America, uh, I have dealt with a lot of racism my whole life. I'm not, that isn't, 
shocking to me. Um, and I've also had, as a black woman who has been in a lot of spaces where I've been the only black person, I've also had to listen and hear a lot of micro microaggressions, a lot of racist words and thinking that people did not think was racist and all of that since I was a little girl. So I'm not shocked. Um, I've had to learn to deal with being offended often, feeling unsafe sometimes, being unsupported in the communities that I found myself in. I've had to learn how to deal with all of that. I definitely found that there were some times within the business, within the team that I was a part of, as well as within the company, that there were times where I would be uncomfortable with some of the phrasing, some of the um, just general conversations that people have when they are comfortable. You know, um, but the world was different <laughs> before 2020. So a lot of times people were saying things and they were not educated enough on racism to know that they were perpetuating racist thinking and that they were being offensive. Um, and so I had to learn how to be um, understanding in ways I shouldn't have had to learn how to be. But it's what you had to do before 2020 because people just didn't know things the way that they are beginning to know now. Um, and I found myself in that space a lot of times within the company, for example, with uh, products. Um, I constantly would fight for diversity in the products, diversity in our marketing. I would let people know that we need to be seen more. We need brown, we need more brown and black faces being seen in marketing materials. We need more products that cater to my particular hair type. You know, my hair is kinky curly. You know what I'm saying? It's, a, it's dry. I mean, that's just what my, that is how God made my hair. And uh, so I need different things. And so I would let that be known. And I felt, you know, sometimes I felt heard and sometimes I felt like, um, like it was like, all right, we'll work on it, you know, kind of thing. So I, you know, I felt heard sometimes and sometimes I didn't, but I was patient because I've learned to be patient my whole life as a result of, again, like I said, mostly being the only black person in large white spaces, I've learned to be patient and to accept, you know, that it, progress takes time. But when everything happened with um, just, I, I like to call it the awakening because I feel like that's when everybody started to realize that black people have been telling the truth the whole time, but all right. Um, <laughs> but when uh, the awakening happened, I was really disappointed in their response. I was really disappointed in their response because their initial response essentially was to kind of talk about unity, bringing people together. And I felt like in their caption, in their attempt to kind of show support, what they really did is just explain the phrase, all lives matter. That's a quick way to offend a black person. I'll tell you that much. Um, and I felt personally like, woo, I mean, knife to the heart attacked. You know what I'm saying? Because the phrase all lives matter, first of all, is only said in response to anyone who says black lives matter. No one just says that phrase. It didn't even come about until the phrase all, I mean, black lives matter came to be. And the truth of the phrase is that that phrase literally doesn't mean anything because all implies black lives matter, which don't seem to matter as much as other lives, right? We know in America that brown and black people are disproportionately affected by a lot of negative things that happen in this country. Immigration, racism, sexism, all the isms. Brown and black people are affected just way, way too often too much in a negative way as a result of so many systems and policies that are in place in this country. Okay. But the truth of the matter is, is when somebody tries to explain that all lives matter, essentially it's, it's erasure of the phrase black lives matter. It's, it's, a, it's saying, I don't care about the fact that you're talking about an issue that is affecting your life as a black person, because I want to say that everybody matters. 
right? And I don't feel like I need to get too deep into that because we've seen all the memes about, you know, the, the fire, your house is on fire, well, all the, my house matters too. Like, we, we all know that sort of thing. But that's why I was greatly offended and felt betrayed um, because of the fact that I felt like I have had to stand beside and be patient and be sensitive feel ignored at times as a black person not as not as a business owner but just as a black person feeling like i'm not being heard also when it comes down to the moment where you have to kind of take a stance and be unequivocal about your stance you basically dismiss the pain that i'm feeling that's affecting me my family my people and yet i stand with you for years patiently and you, in the moment that, that I need you to stand with me, you don't. And so I felt offended, but I did not um, take action necessarily right away because I felt like I need to take some time to think. I, don't, I didn't want to react emotionally. And two, I also recognize that people are going to make mistakes. You know, um, People are trying to figure out where they stand and, and how to support without being offensive and um, all of that. So, you know, I... I you could feel offended while taking a, a beat. And that's essentially what I did. Um, so then there was a second post. I, um, I saw that a lot of black and brown people were like, hey, this post, the first post you're making is offensive. Um, and so it's like, all right, now that we understand a little bit more, here's a second post. And in that second post, it kind of just felt like an elongation of the first one. And I felt like there's such a, there's such a, it feels like there's a choice being made here to ignore the reality of what's happening, the ache and the grief and the pain that a group of people who are part of your business, part of your company are feeling. There seems to be a choice to not really acknowledge like what the pain is. And, um, and because I, had been hurt previously by the first post, and I was already in a state of starting to rethink how this business is working, who it's affecting, if it's effective, all of that. At that point, I decided I can't stand beside somebody who, or, or entities, not just this company, but other companies as well. And I think if you were watching my Instagram stories, you probably saw a few of those things where I was just like, what the heck, you know? Um, but I can't stand beside companies that are willfully choosing to ignore reality, not diving into um, deeper conversations and, and trying to figure out how do we support brown and black people, um, and in particular black people, uh, when they are dealing with huge amounts of crisis. We're not only dealing with COVID, we're now dealing with such huge, realize, not realizations, we already knew about the inequality, but this is just astronomical, right? Um, and so we're dealing with grief on so many, and fear on so many different levels. And I can't stand beside companies that cannot even acknowledge what I'm dealing with. That I, and, I, and I still have to, you know, I can't continue to promote a brand that won't even acknowledge like what's really happening for me. And so that began the journey of me really diving into the truth, the truth of how I felt, the truth of what am I doing with this business? What's possible with this business? What is really going on? And so um, again, I was already in this state of really thinking about what is truth? What is authentic living? you know, what is actually working in my life versus what's not working in my life. Because like I said, I think 2020 for everybody is that. We're all having these moments of like, is this relationship working? Is this friendship working? Do I really like my job? Do I really like my business? We're all in that space. And I was already in that space when now this happened. So I was really disappointed um, in that. And, and, it, like I said, it, it would be fine if that was just one thing, but it's like, I've had to be patient. And while we still don't have products that really cater to my hair, we have two products that I felt catered to my hair. Um, the rest of the products are still really, they are great. I'm not going to take that away. The products work. They work for my scalp and everything. Um, so they work, but it's just like, we need more products that are, are specific to black hair 
And so the fact that I'm being patient while that's happening, and then when we're also dealing with something that is affecting Black people, and there seems to be this kind of silence on it, um, and I know it's hard. It's hard to, as a corporation, to kind of take a stance, but you know, at the same time in 2020, I mean, everybody and their mama is hashtagging Black Lives Matter. You hear me? Okay. I went on to Amazon. Amazon was like, Black Lives Matter. Went on to Netflix. Netflix was like, hey, watch this as Black people, you know? So I knew that it's like, it's hard to take a stance as a corporation because I know you're not trying to offend the people who are like, all lives matter. But the reality is, is that it's never also been easier. Okay. So that's that. So I felt disappointed. And then that led me into d diving into all these other things. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you guys about, because this is, that's how it affected me. That's the catalyst to how it led to all these different things. But here are a few of the other, um, I guess, talking points and realizations that I had about why I couldn't stay with the business. And I feel like these are things that everyone needs to know, whether you're still in the business or in network marketing in general, or if you're considering network marketing, it's important that you are informed in order to make a decision on whether or not it's something you should dive into. And that is all, that is all I'm trying to do is take the lessons that I've learned to help you figure out what to do next. So one of the first things that I thought of um, as to why it was time for me to leave besides that first initial stab in the heart is um, the fact that I don't have a lot of choice. When you're in the business, you call yourself a business owner. I felt like I was a business owner. That's what I said. You know, my team, her team name was Team Girl Boss. Girl Bosses. Love that phrase. But the truth is, is that when it hits the fan, at the end of the day, I don't have control over, over things. This isn't my brand. So me as an individual, I can say hashtag Black Lives Matter. I can say, you know, this is what I want to, this is how I want to deal with quarantine and the reality that is 2020. This is how we want to approach sales. These are the price points that we want to have for our products. These are the types of products that we want to have. You know, we want to get you some grease, girl, get you, well, no, black people don't use grease these days anymore, but you know, whatever. Uh, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I want to be able to have that ability to say, like, these are the things that we need as for, for our customers, right? But the truth is, is that I don't have that control because I'm not a business owner. I'm an independent contractor with the company. So although you feel like, get your business started, because that's the phrase that everybody says, right? It's a phrase that I've said, it's a phrase that was said to me, this is my business, you start your business. At the end of the day, it's not your business. You are a 1099 worker, which is an independent contractor. And so therefore you don't have control over the price point of the product. You don't have control over what products are made or available to you. You don't have control over the sales. You don't know when the sales are going to happen. You don't get to dictate that. Um, you also don't even get to dictate how to incentivize people. Um, you know, and that's per the FTC, the Federal Trade Commission. They really kind of control that uh, in terms of not allowing us to say certain things or do certain things. And that's fine because it's, it's for the benefit of the consumer. But at the end of the day, it, it's really frustrating because it's like, if this was my business, if I'm a true business owner, if I want to hold my own type of sale, or if I want to do whatever to get more customers, I should have that ability to control it. But I don't, I don't end up having that ability to control because I'm not a business owner. And uh, you don't quite understand that until you're in it and you realize that you don't have a lot of control over things. Um, and so that, that made me realize this is, not, this is not really netting me what I thought I was going to have when I first started with the idea that I'm going to be a business owner. I don't really actually have the freedom that I have always craved since I was a little girl, right? The ability to just choose. Now, I will say you can choose... You get to set your salary, if you will, by just how much you're willing to work and how much work you're going to put in, 100%. But we'll dive a little bit into how you get that salary, how you get that 
um, money will dive into that as well. But the point still being is that at the end of the day, though, you don't really have a lot of control um, over your brand because it's not your brand. You're just a contractor with the brand. Um, and so that obviously it really manifested itself when you look at like I said, how I was really disappointed in how long it took for them to kind of really stand beside Black people um, and make it clear that Black lives do matter. Um, but then just how long, you know, we're waiting for some products and things like that, that again, we have products that you can like use for all hair types, but Black people need specific types of things because our hair is different than pretty much every race out there. <laughs> Um, or maybe I shouldn't say race because there's really only one race, but you know what I mean, every ethnicity out there. So we need specific types of things. And I felt like that was definitely um, ignored and I didn't have control over that. Another thing is the truth of the matter is, is that although for the longest time, I felt like I was having success, that I was making a profit, that I was doing well in my business, the truth of the matter is, is that most people do not do well at all in their business. I want to actually read something to you. And it's from the FTC.gov, um, which again, FTC stands for Federal Trade Commission. I'm not going to try to dive into what their, um, what their whole like mission is, you know what I'm saying? But essentially, they're there to protect the consumer from harmful practices. And one of the things that they talk about on their website is um, they have this, this um, Thing talking about the case for and against MLMs, multi-level marketing. And one thing that stood out to me was that they mentioned that failure and loss rates for MLMs are not comparable with legitimate small businesses, which have been found to be profitable for 39% over the lifetime of the business, whereas less than 1% of MLM participants profit. They also go to say MLM makes even gambling look like a safe bet in comparison. So what does that mean? What does that mean? So essentially what they're saying is that legitimate small businesses, only 39% of them actually become profitable. And I think everybody knows that. Like we know, like I said, when I first started in life coaching, I was really struggling. I was struggling with my marketing. I was struggling with my level of confidence with how to find um, um, customers and clients and all that sort of stuff. It's hard out here, okay? But the truth is, is that 39% of them go on to actually have profit in their business. Whereas in MLMs, less than 1% become profitable. What does that mean? That means that there are some people who are making very real, like life changing dollars. Okay. I know it. I've seen it. I'm friends with them, you know, no judgment girl. So there are people who are actually making quite a bit of money, but the truth is, according to this study, less than 1% of people are actually going to have any success in this. That is really scary. And when you first start your business, obviously you don't know if you're going, what you're going to be. Are you going to be the less than 1% or are you going to be the majority of people that 99% who will not make a profit? And it's really easy to think that you're having success when you do see cash coming in. I saw cash coming in every week. So I felt like I was having success. But the truth of the matter is because you're spending a lot of money, whether it be on getting products, whether it be on getting training materials, joining certain different kinds of memberships, you know, I, I dove in, honey, I went and signed up for, you know, memberships to teach me about Instagram, um, books and resources on how to become awesome in network marketing. Uh, I went to conferences, uh, not only with my company, but with other places so I can meet new people and build my funnel, get more clients or not clients, but potential customers, um, in that funnel. Um, I spent a lot of money trying to build my business and educate myself on the field so I could eventually become incredibly wealthy. But the truth of the matter is that according to this study, most of that money that I am making, right, uh, is now 
I'm still operating kind of at it like a deficit, but it doesn't feel like it because you're getting paid every week. You're getting paid every month. You know, every Friday you get a, a paycheck, every 15th you get a bonus paycheck. So you feel like you're making profit, but the truth is, is that because you're spending a lot more money on books, on conferences, on samples, on products, you're actually ending up at a deficit. Now for many people, this deficit is massive. This deficit is into the thousands, all of that. I, I'm grateful that that wasn't the case for me. I was able to actually make profit, but at the end of the day, it's like, I, I don't know if I'm making as much money as I thought I was making because I'm also spending a lot of money in order to make it happen, right? So the truth of the matter is that even if I can say, well, I, I don't feel like I was failing and I don't feel like I was failing, the truth of the matter is, is that majority of people who sign and start their own business are not going to have that kind of success. It's just not set up for them to have it. It doesn't mean that you will never have it. It doesn't mean that it can't happen, but for many people, it's not going to. So that led me to realizing that it, it's hard for me to promote something now with the awareness, because you don't know that when you first start your business, you don't know that, that, that that's the statistic. And, and even though you hear it, you might've heard it, you don't, you know, I read it to you from the FTC site and from the study itself. So you know that I'm not just trying to make this up because sometimes if you have heard it, it's like, oh, somebody said it, you know what I mean? But you don't have a, a, a site to, you know, to, you don't have like something that you're citing, you know, um, it's just something you heard. And that's why I'm making sure that it's like, I am telling you straight from the FTC. And so it's hard for me to promote something knowing now that less than 1% of people are actually going to turn a profit in the business. And for the FTC to say that it's like, it actually makes gambling look like a better option. Like that's kind of crazy, right? That, that led me then to also look at the other truth, which is that in order to grow your business, and I don't know about every network marketing company, but this was just with mine. In order to grow the business, you have to, you have your store, right? I had an online store where I could sell product, right? And so my customers, you don't have to start your business. If you just want shampoo, you want conditioner, you want oil, you just go straight to my website and bam, it's available for you right there. But the truth of the matter is, is that even though the company touts itself as being a customer focused company, the truth is you spend the majority of your time focusing on trying to build your team, really recruiting people to work because that's really where the money is actually going to be. You make a higher percentage when you recruit but at the end of the day, in terms of like, if you want, if you need to make money by next Friday, you need to focus on recruitment, right? And when you have to focus on recruiting, that leads people to do a lot of manipulative things in order to get paid, because that is really where the money is. The company says that that's not the case. A lot of people will say that that's not the case, but that was not my experience. It's not my, it's not, not only was that not my experience, but also on the comp plan in and of itself, you can see numbers wise, percentage wise, where the real money is. And if you want to do the fun things that network marketing kind of allows you to do, such as going on trips, um, getting paid, you know, you're going to have to focus on recruiting and getting people to join the business so that way you can do things like go on the trips and, and all of that. Um, but the problem is, is that a lot of people, and this is not necessarily on the part of like the company per se, but I'm sure, I'm sure to a certain extent, a lot of people might know that people do this and they break the rules and stuff like that and they don't do anything about it. Um, but as a result though, of the fact that it is a recruitment based model that you have to, the money really is in building your team. Many people will manipulate people in order to actually get paid. This is where I feel really proud of myself because I, <laughs> I'm going to toot my own horn here. Toot, toot. Um, I've made a lot of mistakes. I definitely have, but that is not one of them. I never felt like I, I sold myself out in order to make a buck in that way. But at the same time, I also want to preface this by saying that 
by not doing your own work of knowing those things, like the facts of the fact that most people aren't going to have success and blah, blah, blah. I still ended up becoming part of the problem, even if I wasn't willingly manipulating, you know what I mean? Um, and so that's where, where it's like, you have to understand that you, you, you have a high chance of becoming manipulative. If you don't know the facts, the truth, the success rate, all of those sorts of things. And if you find yourself hungry and in need of money in order to pay the bills, in order to, to get that trip, in order to do whatever, if you find yourself in that space where you're trying to rank to the next rank, you're trying to make sure you get that trip, you're going to be tempted to do a lot of things that aren't honest and aren't for the highest good of everyone who comes in contact with you because your money really comes from just recruiting versus if your money really came from just getting customers. And so I found that um, I didn't want to be a part of that, especially now understanding the success rate. I didn't really want to be a part of that, encouraging people to start their own business when in reality, you don't have control over your business. You don't have control over the branding. You don't have control over the price points. You don't have control over the sales. You don't have a control over the stances that people make. I mean, you have control over the sense that you yourself as an independent contractor can take a stance. Um, but the truth is, is that the brand in and of itself is a totally separate thing. And then you, because you don't have control over the price points, over how much money you're going to make, um, your, your cut of the pay, if you will, uh, you, that's why many people end up not actually being successful. And if you also understand that the majority of the money is now ha having to come from recruiting and you're hungry, you're starving because you're not actually having a lot of success. You're not making a lot of profit. You may find yourself saying things that are not true in order to get paid. I have seen that happen, not only with my company, but with other network marketing companies. Um, I have seen it happen with um, uh, just the, the messages people will say or the text that they'll say sometimes blatantly lying. I mean, you can go on YouTube and see things that people do um, from MLMs, but the temptation is so great to not be honest, to not be true, especially if you're not having success in the business model. If you're wanting to go on a trip and you're this close to getting there, you are tempted to lie, like to do things that you shouldn't be doing so you can get to where you're trying to go, whether it be that rank, that trip, or to get that bonus because you desperately need to pay your car payment or whatever the case is, right? And that is never a good place to be. It's never a good place to be when, when you're desperate for basic things, like just getting paid for the work that you're doing, right? Because it just lends you to doing things that you probably wouldn't do if you weren't feeling desperate. And as a result of the fact that the model itself is really focused on growing your organization by recruiting, it also alters the relationships that you have. It puts a heavy strain on them. I am guilty of this. If friends and family didn't purchase from me, didn't, um, if they ghosted me, if they um, never even just asked about my business, I automatically felt like, well, this person doesn't even support me. They don't care about my success, you know? And the reason why I'm putting that feeling on that relationship is because my ability to eat comes from my ability to profit off of the relationships that I have. Now, here's the thing. When you are a business owner in, in any capacity, right? If you open up a, a Dunkin' Donuts franchise, I don't know why I'm thinking about Dunkin' Donuts because I haven't had Dunkin' Donuts in a while, but maybe that's why. But if you open up a franchise, of course you want your friends and family to come to your Dunkin' Donuts, right? And be like, girl, if you're gonna, if you're gonna eat at Dunkin', come to my Dunkin', you know? Um, but the truth of the matter though, is that if you're not relying on your immediate network to support your Dunkin' Donuts in order for Dunkin' Donuts to exist and for you to have, to have success with it, you're not upset if your friends are like, ah, I don't really eat Dunkin' Donuts. But if you're reliant, if your groceries depend on whether or not your family and your friends are actually supporting you, well then yeah, now you're gonna be upset when they don't. 
when they do decide that they don't need your shampoo and they don't need your product, right? And so you find that in your own head, regardless of whether or not they know it, because maybe you're treating them normally, but in your own head, you're creating a story as to well, why, is, why, why didn't my mom buy from me? You know, why isn't my friend joining my team, right? It becomes really difficult to like let that go um, and, uh, and not put this expectation on them to support you. And so that makes it really hard. But again, it's because of the fact that your bread and butter comes from the abil your ability to monetize off of your relationships. And that really changes things because you end up losing friends because of course they're not comfortable with you because you're always talking about your business because you're hoping that they'll inquire about your business and then purchase from you. Um, and, um, and if they ever speak negatively, oh man, we're going to dive into that. If they ever speak negatively about your business, you're going to separate yourself from them because you're trying to stay focused on the prize. You're trying to stay focused on your ability to be successful, which you're struggling to be successful in because again, remember less than 1% of people are actually going to find it to be a profitable business model for them. And instead of knowing that because you don't know that statistic, or you don't believe that statistic, you're thinking that the reason why you're not having success is because your best friend, your mom, your cousin, your boyfriend, whoever is not supporting you. But that's, that's, it's misplaced. The reason you're not having success is because it's not a model where most people will have success. That's from a separate study. That is not my opinion. That is not, that is literally just somebody else doing a study saying, how successful are people in this model? It's not everybody else not supporting you. So that leads me to say the next point, which is you're paid off of your ability to really convince people the relationships that you have. You're not necessarily paid off of the hours that you work. And this is important to understand because I think when you're in the business, you feel like, why am I not... I'm working so hard, I'm working all the time. I'm on social media, especially if you're doing social media, then you're working all the time because you're working your stories, you're working Facebook, you're inside of groups, you're, I mean, you're constantly working weekends, evenings, you wake up thinking, what content am I going to make today that's gonna attract people to me? And you're going to bed thinking, what am I gonna make tomorrow? So you're constantly you know, trying to, um, you're working all the time. And the, the sad part is that, though you're working all the time, you're not getting paid for the majority of the work that you're doing because the real money is on whether or not the relationships that you've made are going to turn into customers or business partners. And if you're not able to turn them into those two, one of those two buckets, no money. It doesn't matter that you spend hours creating videos. It doesn't matter that you spend hours inside of groups talking to people. It doesn't matter how many, you know, events you put on. Doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is whether or not when you host, host that event, does anybody fall into the bucket of business partner or customer? When you do that video, did anybody actually buy or become a business partner? That's the only thing that matters. And yet, it takes a lot of hours to build relationships, right? And so that again, leaves you feeling desperate because if you're putting in hours and hours and hours of work and you're not seeing profit from that, nobody's saying like, yes, I wanna sign with you. Yes, I wanna start my business with you. Yes, I wanna buy your product. You start to feel like, okay, what am I doing wrong? And what can I do to make sure that I can make some money or make sure that I can go on the trip or make sure that I can rank? You start to find yourself asking yourself those questions. And if you don't have a really strong value system, or if you don't have a strong um, sense of self, you may find yourself doing things that are not, you'll regret doing later. You'll regret doing later, okay? And eventually this leads to, um, you know, really having low self-esteem because you're working so hard. You're using the best skills that you have, you know, in order to find success and it's just not working. It's just not happening. And so it leads you to feel really insecure really insecure, which leads to my next point. If you don't have the success that you're looking for, that you're trying so hard, and I, I know for a lot of people in network marketing, they work hard. We're not talking about somebody who started their business and then quit a month later. You know what I mean? We're talking, I was in this for three years. 
Okay, we're talking about people who are really committing their life, really committing um, their time to the success of their business, to their teams, to their customers, all of that. And if you're struggling to find, to really find the financial freedom you're looking for, um, the consistent money that you're looking for, you start to struggle with like self-loathing and low self-esteem. You start to think, why am I not good enough? You know, like, was that video not good enough? Was that, um, was I not funny enough? You start comparing yourself to other people on your team and thinking, well, how would she able to do that? Should I be doing the same thing? Should I straighten my hair? Should I, which I mean, that's part of my story. I felt like, well, maybe if I straighten my hair, maybe if I, you know, whatever, people will be able to see that it really works and then they'll want to purchase. No, Bill. (laughs) No. But you find yourself asking yourself those questions. Why am I not good enough? What am I missing? What's the ingredient, the secret sauce? Um, Why am I not a great enough leader? What does this person have that I don't? And when you're in that space of constantly questioning yourself, it's really hard to acknowledge how hard you're working, the strengths that you have, the skills that you have, how unique and special you are, you find that you're not focusing on that because you're working so hard and not seeing the success that you want, whether it be in the form of a goal, whether it be in the form of a trip, whether it be in the form of money. And so because you're not having that success, again, you equate it to something about you, when in reality, once again, when you know the fact, that less than 1% are going to have success with this, according to the FTC, it really has nothing to do with you. It doesn't have anything to do with your skills, your ability to, sh- to sell or share or recruit or whatever. It's just not set up for you to have the success that you're looking for, right? But you don't, if you don't know that, you, take, you make everything personal. And part of w- what how that happens as well as in terms of how it turns into self-loathing, how it turns into low self-esteem is my next part, which is toxic positivity. This is, this is a phrase that I didn't quite understand until this business. Um, You know, when you find yourself questioning things about your company, you're often met from your upline, from your team with the phrase, you know, stop being negative. You're not trying to be negative. You're just genuinely asking a question because you are a business owner. So as a business owner, you should feel, you know, like you're allowed to ask questions. You're allowed to evaluate and to say, you know, is this is this working? Is this effective? Um, you're allowed to question the validity of things. You're allowed to question the process. When you're a business owner, you need to do those things. You need to question whether or not it makes sense to market on Facebook or to go to vendor shows or, you know, or if this product is really selling out. Like those are things that you should be able to ask. And it doesn't mean that you're being negative so much as you're just being a smart business owner. But Often when you're in an MLM, if you ask questions about, well, why, why don't we have more products for black hair? It's met with that's being negative. How is that being negative? That's just a genuine question. I'm a black girl. I need black girl products. You know what I'm saying? You know? Uh, and so it's like, those are things that you're allowed to ask. Or if you, if you are disappointed in something, maybe there's a sale and you're like, sale isn't really, the discount isn't as great as I'd like it to be. This isn't what I was expecting, blah, blah, blah. Um, You should be able to ask those questions as the business owner. It is not the ability to just critically critique things is not problematic. And your team, your upline and all these other people will, in order to maintain their sense of minds, positive mindset, they make every question mean that you're being toxic or that you're being negative and then encouraging you to ignore your question, ignore your own doubt, ignore whatever it is in order in favor to promote being positive 
When in reality, that's not being positive. That's being, it's, it's toxic positivity. You know, it's not, you're not actually addressing the question. So that, that becomes an issue because of, obviously it's like, you're not, a, you're not facing reality, which is where I think a lot of people who get offended, including myself, because I got offended too. They get offended by the truth that other people have to say, such as, well, you know, most people aren't going to be successful in, in money or in network marketing, or you know that this is blah, blah, blah. They become offended because they've learned to adapt to toxic positivity. That the idea is that I am, my, my, I need to focus on what's possible, not on the problem right? When in reality, once again, there's nothing wrong with identifying problems, focusing on that problem so you can find a solution, finding a solution, and then moving forward, right? And applying that solution. There's nothing wrong with that. And if you really want to be a successful person, not just business owner, you need to do that in your life. Where are the areas in your life that there are problems? Find a solution, fix it, move on. Right. Um, and so that's something that it's like you when you're when you're inside of an MLM, if you're met with thinking that any time that you have a question about pricing, about the numbers, about the products, about the price points, about the incentives, about your pay rate, all of those sort of things. If you're met with people saying that because you're asking, you're being negative, it doesn't allow you to to feel confident in yourself because now you're learning to just ignore your own intuition, your own sense of self. You deserve to get paid for the work that you put in. You know what I mean? You deserve to get acknowledged and not only acknowledge if you reach this level of whatever. You deserve those things, especially if you're working hard. Again, I am not talking about the person who started their business and quits one month in. Those people might've been really smart to do that, to be honest, but I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about the people that were like me, where you did this for years and you did not turn the profit that you were expecting to turn. You didn't rank to where you were ranking, where you wanted to rank. Um, and you're working your butt off and it's not turning into the thing that you wanted to turn into. You're allowed to be frustrated about it and you're allowed to see the unfairness of it and not be automatically labeled as negative because it's not negative, it's just acknowledgement, right? But if you don't understand that, then you ignore anybody who makes you realize that you're allowed to have that opinion, right? Because it's only gonna encourage you to then dive deeper into that doubt, dive deeper into questions, which ultimately when you start asking those questions and bringing them to your team or bringing them to your upline, they're only going to encourage you to believe that that is toxic thinking, when in reality, it's not. This is kind of, you know, I mentioned how, you know, this puts a strain on your relationships and this shows up a lot in relationships as well. If you are talking with your mom about your business and your mom doesn't um, support your business, right? Instead of just respecting the fact that she doesn't support your business, because you've been taught to see anybody who doesn't support you or doesn't you know, boldly buy from you or boldly encourage or support you it, as someone who doesn't believe in you, someone who isn't, um, who isn't thinking big enough, doesn't have a positive mindset. Because you're taught that as a result of the trainings that you go to every day or every week, all that sort of stuff, you start to see your mom, your friends, and all these other people as negative people in your life. And of course, if they're negative, you're not going to want to spend time with those people because they're only going to keep you down because you got to keep your mind really high. You got to believe in this dream and these other things or else you'll be labeled as, you know, being toxic, being negative and all that stuff. That cycle is so toxic. And when you're in it, you don't realize that it's toxic. You don't, because you're being, again, you're being taught to view all of these other things, questionings, doubts, all that stuff. You're, you're being taught to view that as a toxic thing. Um, when in reality it's not. So that was a lengthy portion, but there you go. Um, and then the last thing, I know this is long, but <laughs> there's so many things here. Um, the last thing that I realize is the truth of the matter is, is that when you start your business, the, the truth of it is, is that you end up becoming, and the focus is 
on you buying a lot of the product, you being the main source of income for the company as a whole, whatever brand that is. Um, I saw that in my own company and I see it with other network marketing companies as well, where, and again, you don't realize that. I didn't realize it at all. I mean, I really didn't. I really felt like, no, we're different because for many companies, for example, they will require their business partners to buy from them every month, you know, spend a hundred dollars every month in order to remain active. And because money is not like that, I genuinely thought we are so different. We are doing it differently, girl. And that's what I thought. Well, your girl was wrong. The truth of the matter is that no, you don't have monthly quotas. You do not have to purchase every month in order to actually get paid. Like that's the awesome thing. However, at the same time, in order to get a bonus, you have to have made a certain amount every month, which could come in the form of your customers or come in the form of you buying, right? And if you need to get that bonus or you want to get that bonus and you're not bringing in any customers or you're not bringing a lot of customers in that month, you may find yourself spending money in order to get the bigger bonus available to you on the 15th. So that's number one. But then number two, the truth of the matter is the culture, the community in and of itself, kind of, there's a pressure to buy. There's a pressure to have the first, like the minute a new product comes out, you want to be one of the people that buys that product. So that way you can have the photos so you don't have to take them from somebody else because you have them yourself. You want to try it, right? You want to, I mean, I definitely know that I did. You know, anytime they had a new product, I was like, girl, let me get that product. You know, and it was like, yeah, because I want to try it. I want to see, does it work on my hair? Does it work on my scalp? You know, all of the things, what does it smell like? All of that. These are things that you can't get if so-and-so buys it and then tells you on Instagram, it smells like flowers. Like, no, I don't want to know if it smells like flowers from you. I want to know from my own experience. So you, you feel pressured to buy. And the truth of the matter is, you know, in the emails that I received, in the, um, the correspondence that I would receive from the company, it's geared towards the assumption that I'm going to buy. So from a psychological standpoint, you end up becoming the customer because they're speaking to you like you are the customer. They're speaking to you in a way that's like, hey, we're having a flash sale this weekend. They address the market partner first and they say like, this is the price for you and this is the price for the VIP, but you're getting that first you get the deepest discount, but you're being spoken to as if like, this is the money that you could save, right? Which again, psychologically makes you go, Ooh, I could save. So I'm going to go for that. I'm going to buy that. I'm going to get that. Right. So you end up spending a lot of money and I know I definitely did. I definitely did. I bought a lot of product and then you also end up being pressured to, to buy product in order to rank in order to to get somewhere in the company because if you know once again if you know that you have to have a certain pv which is personal volume meaning this is how much money i have made in the month um and you know like okay i i'm this close to making this much money or whatever the case is i'm this close i'm two percent away from ranking to the next rank and i have been desperate to rank to this rank for two years you may find that you'll do things that you otherwise would not do if you weren't feeling so frustrated with the process and how long it was taking to rank, right? And so now you end up buying product or encouraging people to buy product or creating accounts for people to buy a product or whatever in order for you to actually rank. All of this is against the rules, but you, know, you, you end up doing it because you feel this pressure to actually appear to be successful, not only to the people in your family, but even to the people with inside of your organization. And so, no, there's no, no one is forcing you, of course, no one is forcing you. But once again, it kind of comes back to what I was talking about when I say about recruitment. If your bread and butter comes from how many people you have on your team and how many of those people are working, if your ability to get on the trip comes from that, you all of a sudden will find yourself either considering or going ahead and doing things that you would not otherwise do if you were not placed in that situation in the first place, right? If you were being paid fairly and if you, if you were actually getting paid for the amount of work, of emotional um, work it takes to do what you have to do in your business. 
And so with all of those realizations, I realized now that I'm aware, these are truths that I feel like I, I was hiding from myself. I mean, I could have done this work before 2020. I could have realized this before 2020, but I was in that same, you know, when I was talking about the, 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 um, that place of toxic positivity. You know, I was in that place where I felt like any question that I have, any doubt that I have, any frustration that I have is only a manifestation of my negativity and I need to fix that so I can be successful, right? So anytime that I had those doubts, instead of acknowledging it, diving into it and doing this, diving into the work to be able to point out these things and these flaws in the system itself, I ignored it. I ignored it and that ended up putting me in a space where it's like, okay, now here we are three years later and the little girl who wanted to be a successful entrepreneur, have control over her life and her business and all that stuff, where, where, did, where did she get those things? Like, do I have all of that? No, no, I don't. And so now that, you know, 2020, it, she, she did not come to play with you, okay? She says, you got to face the truth. We're taking away sports. We're taking away TV shows. We're taking away all the things so you can acknowledge what is right in front of you and do the work. As a result of it, here's the truth. Here's the reality. And knowing these things, and there's so many more things that I have to say, but I know this video is so long. Um, that I don't, maybe I'll talk about it in another video. Let me know if that would be something that you'd be interested in. But once I got to that place, it's like, I can't move forward. I can't move forward because I can't encourage more people to dive into this business or dive into the, the industry as a whole. Because at the end of the day, the most important part of it is that less than 1% of anybody who starts their business, AKA becomes an independent contractor with any network marketing company, you're not going to have success. And it has nothing to do with you. It has nothing to do with your skills, your talents, your time. Not you. It's just the model. You need to know a lot of people. You need to have built a lot of trust. And even with knowing a lot of people, just knowing a lot of people doesn't mean that you're going to have success either. Cause there's a whole, there's a whole little game that has to be played in order for you to rank, which I won't dive into that today because that would definitely make this video <laughs> like two hours long. Um, but that's basically in a nutshell, how I arrived here, where now I have decided to no longer work with this brand and to no longer even support the industry as a whole. The products are great but I can't support the industry as a whole since I know that for the majority of people who even join anything within network marketing are not, they're not only going to not have success, but they're going to lose money. You know, um, it's not always what happens, but for many people it is. And I, I just am very lucky that I didn't lose like thousands or anything like that. Whereas there are people who have lost They've put up their homes. They've opened up credit cards to get their business started. All these different things where it's like, that is money that you're, that you may not get back. And, um, and I, I, I just can't, I'm an Enneagram four and, uh, <laughs> authenticity is so, so my core value. And so therefore knowing all this information now, I can't support it moving forward. Um, so I say all of that to basically tie this in a bow to say that that's, that's the end of this chapter. Um, there's a lot of good things that I learned from being in a network marketing company. And there's a lot of people within the network marketing company within corporate, as well as um, independent contractors like I was, that I still really love and adore. And you know that's why I'm scared to post this because I know there are gonna be people who are greatly offended by the words that I'm saying who are going to feel betrayed, who are going to feel really disappointed and angry and upset. And I don't, this is not a personal attack. I don't want anybody to feel like that. I just don't, I just have learned a lot of things and I wish that I knew this stuff three years ago. Um, and so as a result of knowing that I wish that I knew it, I wanna share that with other people. 
um, so that way they don't make that same choice that I made. This is nothing personal against anyone, like personally. This is just the industry as a whole is something that I realize it can't, it's not very beneficial to a lot of people. And, um, and I really can't stand beside anything that's not going to be beneficial to the majority of the people who decide to join it. Um, so I won't be doing that. <sighs> And that's it. That's all. Um, moving forward, what's next? I know I've definitely had quite a few people over the last couple of months notice my silence and my absence from social media. And they're trying to figure out what am I doing? Am I still doing it? Well, here's your answer, right? Um, but also, you know, yeah, I'm not sure exactly how I'm going to show up on social media moving forward. Because uh, to be honest, I'm not loving social media in 2020, okay? Uh, it is very, it's a traumatic space to be in uh, for many reasons. And so um, I'm not sure what role um, sites like Facebook and Instagram have in my life moving forward. I'll still be on there for now, but we'll see. So if you're really wanting to stay in touch with what I do next, where I go next, um, you're more than welcome to join my email list. And um, you can go to thelexiwilson.com in order to join that email list. I'm sure wherever you're listening to this or watching this, I'll also include a link so you can directly join there. Um, so I encourage you to join there because I, I will definitely still be an entrepreneur because that is my dream. I am positive that I am going just to be diving back into my life coaching business. And that's where my heart is anyway, because my life has always been devoted to helping people to manage their emotions, to overcome their anxieties, to, to feel confident enough to follow their dreams. And so I know that that's where I'll be diving in. And part of being in money and being in network marketing, um, part of what has been beneficial for me is that it has helped me to learn how to trust my my own intuition, trust my voice, um, and identify myself as a leader, which are things that I didn't quite know before Monet. And at the same time, I've learned so much about marketing and strategy as a result of my experience with this company. So um, I'll definitely still be utilizing those things as an independent, like my own legitimate small business, um, separate from, from the brand. And so I, I'm sure that I can bring a lot of value to you if that's something that you're looking for. So that's why if you're wanting to stay in touch and you're wanting to see how you can work with me in the future, um, once those ways become really available to you, then definitely join my email list. Uh, I had a podcast as well, and I haven't dived into it in 2020 because 2020 has been called Rosie Girl. So... <laughs> So that will be coming back though, which I'm really excited about. So um, that is definitely to come. So coaching is definitely going to be coming back. Podcasting is coming back. Life is going to look different in 2020 than it has for the last three years. And I am both really scared and really excited, really excited because I think with all of the experiences that I've had, especially now considering the last three years, um, I am so confident in the success that I will find in the future, and I am so excited to see where everything leads that as, as sad as it is to leave behind something that has meant some, so much to me for the last three years, and as afraid as I am of losing friends, of losing the respect of people and all this other stuff, um, I am more excited to be living my truth and being honest about where I am in my life and who I want to be. And that is, that's me. That is, that is, that is me. I live by, by that. So um, thank you so much for watching this all the way through or listening to this all the way through, because this was a long one, but I'm hoping that this encourages you and gives you the information that you need to make an informed decision, whatever way you will go with that. And uh, hopefully it gives you everything that you need to know, the things that I wish I knew um, before I started. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Stay tuned. There's much more to come. See you guys later. <laughs> Bye.